Oh man, that's when I remember who I am. Yo, I'm King Tay, cold, but I'm still dropping bombs like I'm Green Bay. Hell, Mary, throw it in the air for the last play. This was a boulevard of broken dreams like it's Green Day. Watch me like a screenplay, put my life on replay. Sweat has been a long time coming. Focus on the art, spend a long time on it. I can't miss a mark like I'm Hawkeye. Running with my eyes on the target, best believe I want it. Yeah, I want my crown and want to wear it too. What is up, guys? Uh, this is episode five of the Team Cole Show, and we have a very special guest today, uh, the one, only, James Mitchell. What's up, buddy? What's up? I appreciate you having me on. And Dude, I'm I'm thankful we found time to get you on. Uh, so, high school, successful. College, had a successful career, a couple of injuries, and now, dude, you're in the pros. Uh, what What's it like just coming from a small town, and then now, you know, people are getting to see you actually, you know, getting playing time catching touchdown passes and stuff for the Detroit Lions. I mean, how's the whole experience been so far? Yeah, so it's – I'm grateful, first of all. I just want to say um, – I want to say that, first and foremost, just blessed by God to be in this position. You know, it's something I worked for for a very long time. But it, it's a great experience, especially, you know, how it is when you just put your efforts into something and you want to achieve a certain goal and you get – you see it kind of come to fruition. It's it's awesome feeling and just – you know, obviously, like you said, I battled through some things. So, you know, coming out of the other side of that, it makes it even even better. But, yeah, just being a small-town kid and, you know, having all these kids uh, now just come up to me and, you know, tell me how cool it is and how awesome it is. That, that makes it all work, worthwhile. That's awesome, man. Uh, yeah, I was talking to someone the other day. They were talking about how, like, every time you go to a – to a union football game, union basketball game, you're never one to like turn your back and like, you know, not sign something, not talk to kids, not, you know, let them know like what's going on. So I think that's awesome. Uh, so, you know, we've seen, you know, your high school career and people, you know, kind of questioned, you know, how you would transition to college. I think transitioned well. Uh, I was, I was super pumped, always uh, been rooting for you. Uh, but what was harder? Was it harder going from high school to college or from college to the NFL? I think it was harder going from high school to college because uh, I would say the one thing about going from college to NFL is you already kind of know what it's like to kind of start over, so to speak. When you're coming from high school to college, you really don't know what that feeling's like. You still think you're the man. You're still, <laughs> you came from being the best guy on your team or one of the best guys. So I definitely say it hits you more like coming from high school to college. Um, you know, you don't really know how to manage your time. It's your first time living alone, uh, that sort of stuff. So, and you're just not used to the speed of the game, quite frankly. I mean, obviously, going from college to NFL, there is different speeds, but it's not as drastic as a change as it was going from playing two A ball to the ACC. So, I would definitely say that transition was a little bit harder, just because you know I didn't know what to really expect. So, when you was in college, like, who are some of the uh other players that you played against that are now like you know doing their thing in the NFL. I know like you played what uh, did you play Trevor Lawrence? Did you ever play him or? Yeah, we played Clemson my junior year. The year the year he came out, we played them. Um, Carlos Basham, he plays for the Bills. Uh, he played at Wake Forest. Um, bunch of guys from Notre Dame. Uh, Julian Love, uh, Jeremiah Wusu, uh, he plays for the Browns. There's a bunch of guys. It would be hard to count. Uh, some guys from North Carolina. I mean, we played we played high caliber guys pretty much every week. So, so like some of these guys, like when you're in college, <clears throat> do you kind of know like which ones like are are going to the next level? Like you just not saying like you know everyone there, of course, is you know great athletes. Everyone there, you know, is there to play ball. But mm -hmm. like, can you kind of look and see like who's who's preparing themselves for that next level? Like to, to play in the pros? Yeah, I think you can see because I think it's just like how you're in high school and you can tell, oh, that guy's going to go play college. Like there's just a certain level of preparation that they do, a certain level of dominance that they do, and it's evident on film that you can say, okay, yeah, that guy's going to play at the next level. And like I said, we face at least a couple of those every week. So, so uh, of course, you know, we, we talked about uh, you seeing that in college, but – you know, those Appomattox teams that you played and stuff. Did, now, was there any of those kids that you've seen in college, or is there any of those kids now playing in the NFL that you can think of? Uh, I know Javon Scruggs. We played him. He was at Liberty. Um, he was their quarterback slash safety for them. He was a great athlete, great player. And then uh, Devon Graves, um, he started at NC State, I believe, uh, but he ended up transferring. I think Scruggs might be coming out this year. I'm not 100% sure. Um, if not, he's coming back for his fifth or sixth year at Liberty. But uh, those two were 
great players, um, Division One athletes, and uh, the reason why part of the reason why they won state three years in a row. So. Right, they were that was definitely a really good team. Uh, and talking about fifth year, sixth year, I mean, you played during COVID time. Uh, how crazy was it to try to go to college and uh, play football during the pandemic? I mean, it had to be difficult, of course. Yeah, it was. It was just a weird experience, just from a football perspective, because there was no fans. Like, obviously, nobody had ever experienced that, and it was weird. Um, in the preseason, like, we felt like we were just practicing for nothing. We thought the season was going to get canceled, quite frankly. And, you know, ended up not, but it got delayed, like, a whole month. Our first game wasn't until, like, September 26th, and we were supposed to open up on, like, the 3rd of September or something like that. So we had, like, a whole extra two or three weeks of camp. Like, everybody was just worn out. But, yeah, it was definitely interesting. And then, you know, people – there was – some people like the school part, you know, uh, getting to do online. It really just depends. But I'll say personally, I did miss being on campus, seeing all the other students because there was literally nobody on campus. It was just athletes. So you went to practice and then you went home and that was your life pretty much the whole year. So it was it was rough in that aspect. That would be rough. Yeah. Uh, so y'all didn't have fans like for the games? We had like a thousand, which when you compare, That's not a lot, when you, <laughs> That's when you compare it to 66,000. <laughs> And then we went to Duke, actually, and Duke, there was nobody. It was literally the bus drivers in the stands. That was it. That would be very weird. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, of course, the atmosphere at Tech uh, yeah. with, like, the, it was the inner Sandman. Like, mm -hmm. you know, that before the game is, like, just get your energy pumping. Like, I'm, I guess, you know, a thousand fans, I'm sure they went crazy, but yeah. not really, like, what you would expect. Uh, so, let's go back to uh, high school. Uh, born and raised, grew up, what, in Big Stone mm -hmm. the whole time? Uh, when you were at what age was you like, okay, I, I think I'm meant for this. I'm meant to play football. Uh, cause I knew you loved basketball too. Yeah. That was a, I know that was your, your, your baby too. But, mm -hmm. uh, uh, what, at what age was it like, you know what? I, I think I'm going to pursue football. I think that's what I'm, I'm best at. Yeah. So I would say age wise, I would say probably during my junior season, um, I got an offer from Virginia under their old staff as a freshman, but still then I was just kind of like, I mean, I'm 15 or 14, 15 years old. I'm like, yeah, like I still loved basketball, like you said. So I was just kind of letting it all ride, letting it all play out. Um, but after my junior season, so I would have been, I guess I would have been 17. Um, you know, I started getting calls from like Penn State, Michigan, That's like crazy. all these schools, <laughs> like, uh, Tennessee, Clemson just came off the national championship. They offered me, and I'm like, all right. Like, I knew it then. I, I kind of had always had in the back of my mind, like, this is probably going to be the best route for me if I want to be a professional athlete. But, you know, like I said, I still I still just loved basketball, like, just something about it. But kind of once after that season, I had a pretty – I had a good year, and, you know, I got calls from those schools. I was like, yeah, this is, this is going to be the route for sure. Uh, I've always told people, especially locally, I was like, man, James was really good at basketball. I think that just a lot of people was like so impressed on how dynamic he was in football. I mean, you went from that guy that was playing tight end wide receiver to, you know, your senior year having to play quarterback. And then of course you played in uh, a time where this area had a Matt McClung, which has never happened. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, even, you know, when you say like basketball player, like I would say probably you was, you know, right up there with him. I mean, you was a, a great basketball player. I think he just had like that celebrity factor, mm -hmm. you know, when you get on balls life and stuff like that. I mean, and they're really, really pushing you because you're that kid from that's dunking the ball like crazy in the crazy viral videos. I mean, that's that's one thing I think that people probably looked at. And uh, but no, as an all around athlete, though, man, like people, some people don't even realize that your state championship comes in track. Yeah. You know, <laughs> that's great. Uh, you know, you was, uh, was you all state in basketball as well? Uh, I think because like they had a different, they had like a VHSL one and then they had like a coaches vote. I think I got like second team in the coaches or something like that my senior year. Uh, I never got VHSL all state. Um, I was all region or whatever, but there was, there was a lot of good basketball players in our area. I will say that when I was in high school, um, from the time I was a freshman to the time I was a senior, we had a lot of, I had the fortune of playing against a lot of good players in uh, Southwest Virginia and uh, Northeast Tennessee as well. So. That is awesome. Uh, <clears throat> so what what did you win state in? I know uh, Jordan's told me, and by the way, Jordan is uh, my brother slash James's brother-in-law. Uh, 
a big uh, I got him in my phone as big head. <laughs> but Jordan told me, uh, was it the four by four or was it the four by one? Four by one. Yeah. That's, that's tough though. That is tough. That's a good race. Uh, yeah. so you know, and then let's go back to your accomplishments in football. Uh, you know, all state is a freshman, if I'm if I'm mm-hmm. not mistaken. Yeah. So all state four years, and then your senior year was it all was it all American? It was like um I was the number one tight end in Virginia. So the USA Today, they do like, like they do teams and they had each state. So I was the number one tight end in Virginia for what it's worth. It's worth a lot. <laughs> I like. I, I would like to think so, especially when you start to talk about like, uh, you know, people, you know, here in Virginia and people who haven't left this area think, oh, Virginia, you know, they're thinking of the country and stuff. But mm-hmm. if you haven't left this area. Yeah, you don't realize that that other side, that mm-hmm. Tidewater area, they got uh, some athletes. Oh my gosh, Oscar Smith, uh, mm-hmm. Phoebus, uh, teams like that are definitely uh, a different, different level. Uh, sure. That's one thing Eric told me about going to college. He said, you know, it isn't that these people really uh, are better athletes; it's they know the game like we had. Mm-hmm. Like I had no idea. So he said that's how the transition from high school to college for him was. Uh, really hard because you're going from Eastside football to Virginia Tech, and yeah. he said it was, it was like so confusing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like I said, you transitioned well. Uh, so in your high school career, uh, playing football, what's uh one moment that really stands out to you? Uh, and then I'll tell you mine, James Mitchell moment. But I want to hear yours. Which which moment really sticks out and uh really just holds key to your heart? Uh, man, that's tough because. I would say as a team, I'm going to do team, I'm going to do an individual one. They both come against the same team, ironically. But as a team, I would say my freshman year, we were um, playing at Richlands. You know, Richlands always had great teams uh, when I was in high school. And um, it was like, there was like maybe eight, there was, I can't remember how much time left was in the fourth, but we were down 28 to seven in the fourth. And I just remember like we came back, I had like two big fourth down catches and then Tanner Hall threw the game one touchdown to um, Bryce Spears and we kicked the field goal and we won 28-27. It was like the biggest comeback like anybody had seen with that that short amount of time. So that was, say, as a team, my individual moment would probably be my senior year. Um, obviously, like I said, I got had to play Wildcat quarterback because Bailey got hurt uh, the second game of the year. So we're in the first round of playoffs with the number one seed. Like we're 10-0. Like it's us and Appomattox, basically. Basically, we're both the one seeds, and um, we're playing Richlands at home in the first round. Um, and like they're they're giving it to us the whole game. Like it's a tough game. I think it was like at this point, it was like ten to six or something like that. And it's like two minutes left in the fourth, and I ripped off like a sixty-five yard touchdown, and then we ended up stopping them. Um, they missed a field goal from like 40 yards and we won the game. And it, that was probably my best individual moment as a play, playing in high school. And that one definitely is dear to my heart just because, you know, we were supposed to t- handle them pretty well being the one seed, playing the eight or whatever. But, you know, playing Richlands, it's always good games. And that was probably my first I – don't, I don't know if it was my first, but one of my – only game winning touchdown. So I was that. That's my moment. That's right. I was there. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I remember you. Quarter. You're sitting with I was Jordan. In the quarter. Yeah. yeah. Well, me and Jordan was sitting on the fence, man, and uh, I was watching. And you know, I showed up a little late, but like I was like wide eyed. I was, I was like, what is going on? Mm-hmm. Like, dude, like I thought Richland was down this year because that was one of their down years. Yeah, it was. But all their kids that had been hurt all year come back. Mm-hmm. Uh, from what you know, I talked to their coach. He was like, yeah, you know, we had a, you know, a lot of our players weren't healthy, but then mm-hmm. all of a sudden. Come playoff time, all these players are healthy, and mm-hmm. you know they came in uh, definitely played a really good game. And uh, I remember just being in that corner, and you broke that run, and when you scored, I was like, "What?" And just be, being there, that was my first time being in a game at uh oh my god, what's the what's Bull that? Park? Yeah, Bull Park, man. Yeah. Uh, and it was unreal. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the energy down there is definitely it's crazy. Uh, a lot different than uh, you know <laughs> you played at East Side. Uh, you know, but hopefully the culture changes. We got a really good group of kids uh, coming mm-hmm. up, so. Maybe we'll see. Uh, at the end of the day, you can have great kids coming up, but they gotta remember to like work hard and just you know do the fundamentals and stuff. For sure. uh, so fast forward college, of course, you had a, a, some injuries. Mm-hmm. Uh, how was your college career? I mean, as far as you know, first year you come out, uh, you were on some special teams. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, that transition on coming in, being the new guy at campus. 
you know, earning the starting role, uh, then, you know, facing adversity, just everything that happened in college, you know, how was that whole process and still keeping a positive mindset to make it to where you want to go? Yeah, so I'll say the first year was hard, kind of like I said, just it being harder coming from high school to college than college to the NFL. But you probably uh, never not started either. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that was that was different for sure. Um, you know, the summer, the summer's a summer. Like you do workouts and you do a little bit of school. It's not that bad. And then you get to your first camp and it hits you like a ton of bricks. You're like, what is this? Like, no, because obviously in high school, like around here, we don't really do like camp, camp or right. anything like that. So. That was hard. And then, like you said, just being in that position, it was different. Not that it was something I couldn't do or didn't want to do. It was just something that I hadn't had to do yet up until that point. And, uh, you know, we had two good players at the tight end position in front of me. And the big – I'd say what a lot of people don't understand is a big thing about college and NFL. It's, uh, it's about earning trust. You know, you can be a really good player, but if they can't trust you to be out there, then you're not going to be out there. Right. So that's a, that's a big part of it. And – you know, everybody has to do that. Everybody has to earn that trust. So, um, you know, I was continuing to fight that and trying to earn that trust throughout my first year. Um, and, you know, I I was – technically we had two tight ends on the first team and then I was the first guy on the second team. So, you know, I had worked my way up, and but it was going to be hard to pass those two veterans in that first year. Who um, was the uh, – was it Cole? And- it was – no, we had uh, Dalton Keene King, and okay. uh, Chris Cunningham. So, you know, I sat behind them, but I learned a lot from them in that first year. Um, with the good thing about my room at Virginia Tech and even now with the Lions is we didn't have any egos in our room. So that's what I like about the position. Usually there's a lot of selfless guys and that play that position. So, uh, you know, I'm very fortunate in that. But, you know, they helped me along the way. And then towards the end of the year, it was kind of like, man, I still wasn't playing very much. So it, it was kind of rough. But I, once I got to the spring, Chris ended up transferring. And Dalton was hurt in that spring, so I was taking I was taking all the first team reps. So I, I took that advantage. You know, I had a really good spring, had a really good spring game, and that really propelled me into the sophomore year and really into the rest of my career. You know, having that first spring uh, in college and just taking advantage of it, showing them that I could play and contribute, and you know, ended up having a good sophomore year. And it just kept going like that, kept propelling myself into the next year. Okay, so. Uh... You end up getting a starting role. Uh, everything's going great. How do you pick up the nickname, the governor? I've always wondered that. Uh, yeah. You know, we see the, you know, you, you say that, you know, you have selfless people uh, in the in the room and stuff. And uh, we're starting to see, you know, getting catches. We start to see, you know, doing the handshakes and stuff. And and then we see the, the nickname comes out. I've always wondered, like, how did you get that? Like, what what took place in that locker room for you to get that? Well, it was actually a coach that gave it to me. I don't know. It was weird. I guess it's just how I carry myself. I really don't know. But I was we were just watching film or he was pulling up some film for me. And uh, we were just sitting there. I guess I had just gotten out of a coach's meeting. And he was like, he was like, by the way, like I just told all the coaches, like, when you're done playing, you're going to run for governor and I'm going to run your campaign. And I was just like. (laughs) <laughs> okay like whatever <laughs> like i was just struck it off or whatever i like it yeah and uh i don't know like he started calling me gov and then you fast forward to camp and one of the coaches i was like running off the sideline he was like like what's up gov and i was like well, i was like what's up <laughs> and uh he said um you know you should get uh pete which was our media guy he he said you should get him to put that on all your tweets and stuff and he happened to be standing right there so i was like hey well he's right there let's just tell him so he told him and then that night he tweeted it out like new nickname alert like James Mitchell's the governor or whatever and like he actually had posted a picture of me at um, ACC media days and we had like our suits on so it was actually a pretty fitting picture like you know that James Mitchell's the governor and I'm sitting here in a suit and tie at the podium right. like talking to all these people um, and I come in the next day and all the players are like the governor like what well, like what's that about but it actually ended up sticking like we played North Carolina our first game on ESPN primetime game and they're calling me the governor on the broadcast and I'm like okay like I guess we're just rolling with it and then my first touchdown Detroit put it on their tweet too so we'll see if it continues to that stick is tough. But, I, like yeah. it though. Uh, yeah. I like it uh it means you take charge man you yeah. know you're in charge so uh and of course fast forward you know uh we see you uh at the ACC is it the conference thing where you the preseason 
Mm-hmm. When you go and talk and stuff, yep. uh, we see you there. We see like, hey, man, they, they, they got a lot of faith in them. Come out. You're having a good senior year. Of course, get hurt. Mm-hmm. Uh, in in that moment, like on that play, did you realize that something was not right uh, when you take that hit? I would say, honestly, no, because the way it happened, I just took a helmet to the knee. So I'm just thinking like, okay, like obviously I just took a helmet to the knee. So obviously I'm going to be in pain. So I'm thinking that, and I'm like, I got up on my own. I walked off on my own. I actually tried to get back in the game, but they had to, like, stop it, so I had to come out for a play. So, you know, I just thought, like, maybe it's, like, really bruised or just something of that nature. And they actually took me back to the sideline, and I guess my adrenaline was running so much when they did the ACL test on me. Like, they said, like, you know, we don't think it's that. So I'm warming up trying to get back in the game. Luckily – Luckily, we were handling the game pretty well at that point, so I didn't have to get back in. Who were y'all playing? Was it? Uh, Middle Tennessee State. Middle Tennessee State. And then I'll say, so that was in the second quarter. We went into halftime, and the adrenaline wears off. And, like, it starts clicking. I'm like, okay, like, this isn't good. I tried to run. I couldn't run anymore. And I was like, yeah, this ain't good. But still, I had faith because they had, you know, they had thought that it wasn't the ACL. So I still had faith that I was going to be back at least some point during the season. And then – you know, they said we're going to get an MRI. Or they brought me in after the game and was like, yeah, like something doesn't feel right. We're going to get an MRI. And that's when I was like – I was heartbroken at that point. And then Sunday, obviously, got the MRI and it came back that I had torn my ACL. Now, had you uh, had you had any prior injuries other than the ACL? I know it was your, your junior year. Mm-hmm. You had another injury. Was it to your – I did. Uh, maybe? So, I did my finger my fresh – that same spring, my freshman spring. But it – you know, I still practiced. I played in the game, so that wasn't much. My junior year, I did um, – I sprained my MCL, and I missed, like, two oh. games. And I ended up having, like, just a scope done on it, which wasn't that bad. And, you know, I was good by spring ball. So, this was the first time I really experienced a major injury. Surgery and everything? Mm-hmm. Okay. God, that uh, – dude, a lot of people in that position, uh, knowing, you know, having to play through COVID, having to play through all this, getting the – Literally having to come in from small town to to ACC football, mm-hmm. having to earn you know your spot, you're working hard, you know. A lot of people would have just like you know, they they they'd have been like, oh, this is it, this is it. Mm-hmm. But no, you you seem to stay positive. Uh, then you get into you know you enter the draft. Uh, was you surprised at what team picked you up or uh, yeah. having technical difficulties? You know, you come in, you you end up entering the draft, and then was you surprised at where you got drafted or, like, what team picked you up? Like, of course you don't know beforehand, mm-hmm. right? I mean, yeah. I mean, unless your script came out. And that's- <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get no script. I told, no script. I told everybody else that's above my pay grade, I guess, because I didn't, I didn't get one. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, was you surprised at what team picked you up? And then, when, of course, when uh, you did get – picked up by the Detroit Lions. Was that was that like okay, Detroit. I, I've never been there. I want to come. I want to come watch a game. Yeah. Uh but the Motor City man is that like the is it a good place to live? I mean, I've heard good and bad. So yeah. what's your opinion on just being up there in the cold? <laughs> so honestly, Detroit was one of the teams I didn't really talk to that much in the whole process. Uh the funny thing about that is they had actually called my agent a couple of days before the draft and was like you know, and the chance that James doesn't get drafted, like we would love to have him as an undrafted free agent come up to Detroit. So I'm like, okay, they're at the bottom of the list, like as far as teams who are going to draft me. Now they had a good situation as far as tight ends for me to go there and compete, um, but I didn't think they were going to draft me. So when they called me, I was like, like, this is a shock. Like, because like I said, I didn't even talk to him really that much. I met with the tight end coach at the combine. That was pretty much it as far as communication. So I was I was very shocked that they that they picked me, but um like I said it was a good situation up there. Um you know we actually traded TJ midway through the season, uh, so I think it's a good spot for me uh, as well as a good spot to learn. Uh, with Dan Campbell being the coach, playing tight end in the league, OC was a tight ends coach, uh, so it's a it's a good spot for sure. Uh, living there, I live in a town called Southgate, so it's like. 15 minutes from the city. Not Detroit. <laughs> I don't live in the city, but I've been downtown plenty of times. Obviously, the stadium's downtown. Um, it, the downtown area is not that bad. It's a very nice area. It's just like any major city. Like, 
you know, you can be in a good part five minutes and then you drive five minutes and you're in a bad part. So you just have to be cautious of where you're at and, you know, of, of that sort of thing. But um, I would say the stigma is it gets a little more hate than what it should, I guess. Right. Um, like, obviously, like I said, like any big city, there's going to be bad parts and crime and things like that. So you just got to be cautious in that sense. That's how I, uh, I felt about going to Dallas. I drove 15 hours to Dallas Jeez. just to go to WrestleMania and uh, slept in a Walmart parking lot. So when I was, yeah, yeah, I slept in a Walmart parking lot, bro. It was one of those things where it's like after the ultimate fight, I just told myself like, yeah, I'm living life. Yeah. Like, so uh, when I drove down there, it wasn't until I got back and started Googling some stuff and they talked about how much like <laughs> homicides, like unsolved homicides are in Dallas. I was like, oh, I probably should have, you know, <laughs> slept in a Walmart parking lot. So I made sure, uh, I was like, okay, next time I went down there, I flew mm -hmm. and I made sure that I had my P's and Q's checked. But right. no, you're right. Uh, you never know, especially like you'll be driving and it's like super nice. You're seeing all this nice stuff. And then you're in like a spot that you're like, okay, well, maybe I shouldn't be here. You're right. Uh, that's really how it was uh, being down there and just being in a big city like that. And uh, I think another place I drove was probably like Memphis. And, oh, yeah. Memphis uh, dude, I didn't stop. <laughs> I, I, I didn't even take my chances to see yeah. if there was a good a good place. I just, I didn't stop with the whole time. Uh, but yeah, man, uh, Detroit does have like a little uh, stigma, but mm. I'm, I'm sure, dude, the, the fan base has to be crazy though. Oh, it yeah. has to be crazy. So uh, now you're on the D Detroit Lions. Who uh, are some of these players that you get to play with that just like, you know, you chop it up with, you maybe hang out with? Who are some of your uh, close friends up there? So I would say my closest friends are the guys in the tight end room, Brock Christ, Shane Zilstra, Garrett Griffin, Jason Cabinda, and even TJ before he left. But, um, you know, those are all great guys. Um, we all, we get the comments that we're always doing stuff together. Like if you see one of them in the building, you're going to see all of us. But, uh, it was like that at, for me at tech too, which is why I love, I love it uh, and love being there. But, um, those are probably the guys I hang out with the most. And then probably some of the other rookies, just because we were together so much, especially in the summer, like we had to do rookie development meetings. Um, I mean, when we first got there, we were together all the time, staying in the hotel together. So just some of those guys, um, in the rookie class obviously the bad part about it is some of the guys obviously got released or cut some good friends of mine but um you know that's part of the no it's that, part of the business so that's the rough part i guess that is one thing about being in the pros is like it goes from you know like, like hometown you know everybody's close everybody makes a team mm -hmm. to now you know you got, probably got friends getting cut left and right just because mm -hmm. it's it is a business ultimately yeah uh so of course, have have they spoke to you? Uh, you know, with your tight end getting traded midseason, have they talked to you about the the role that they want you to play in the upcoming season? Anything that they've said that maybe have has clicked to you? Like, okay, like this could be this could be special. Uh, yeah. Anything that they've said to you in particular? Uh, I would say I'll know more when I go back in the spring when we start off season. That's when they'll have their evaluations of you know, kind of what I need to get better on when they, cause they've had time to watch the film from the season. Um, I will say that they said that they were happy with, you know, how I was continuing the trend I was going on towards the end of the season. Um, you know, I didn't play the first three games and then the first couple games where I was active, I was kind of still getting used to the feel. Um, but by the time the end of the season was rolling, um, you know, I felt like I was in a pretty good spot and I think they saw that and they kind of relayed that to me. You know, they kept encouraging me every week, like, you know, you're getting better, like you're starting to figure things out. And then obviously they knew I was coming off the injury too, which was another battle in and of itself. Um, so I think that's a, that was part of it too. Just they saw me starting to get over that hump and trust in my knee and trust in, you know, that I was, that I was brought here for a reason. And, um, you know, I'm looking forward to this next year, having a full off season to really, get back to where I was heading into my senior year of college. So I'm excited. Absolutely. Uh, so, you know, was it, I'm, I'm thinking it was probably around what time frame has it been since now that you did have your ACL tear? I mean, yeah, I know even coming, you know, I know you was home when you got drafted, which is what, April? Yeah, April. April. Yeah. I know that you were still recovering from that. And mm -hmm. then, you know, going to, the lines, you know, and even the medicine. Dude, I'm curious about everything. Mm -hmm. uh, even the medicine, you know, once you leave Virginia Tech, I'm sure they quit. 
you know, you quit seeing those doctors and stuff. How was it even the medicine on the pro level uh, as far as like the doctors, the rehab, everything, the whole nine yards? Uh, does it, is it advanced or is it the same thing that you would do if you was, of course not if you was a high school student in South Virginia, I mean, yeah. but, but uh, what, what are the steps that's possibly changed as far as like doctors and stuff go? Uh, so luckily for me, like, I didn't have to interact too much with the team doctors just because I was so far along in my recovery. So once I got to Detroit, you know, I was right with the PTs. Like, you know, the one bad thing about ACLs is kind of everybody wants to do it their different way, which isn't a knock to anybody. That's just how how they right. do it. Um, different shows for different folks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I went to Florida to once I graduated in January. And so I did it there. And then I got to Detroit and they kind of just wanted to you know, see how different things looked. I guess I'll just leave it at that. Um, but yeah, I, I went right with the PTs. I didn't really have to interact with the team doctors too much because, like I said, I was far along. I think at that point I was like five or six months post surgery. So you know, I was to the point where I was running, basically doing a lot of cutting. Um, so I'm thankful for that, honestly, just being advanced going there. Um, but the rehab was hard. Uh, it was um, even when I was in Florida with my trainer down there um, at Exos or my PT down there, he, he worked me out hard. And then going there, it was the same thing. Like I'd be going like three hours straight, just rehab almost. And like, <laughs> yeah, PT ain't no joke. it ain't no yeah, joke, PT ain't no joke. <laughs> especially coming off. Cause another thing about ACL, you lose everything. Like I was weak and my conditioning was down. I was like, by the time I could run, was you in? I was in Pensacola. Pensacola. So like on the Gulf okay. side. Yeah. It was nice. Nice down there. So what'd you do when you was just down there? Was you just down there, you know, just, you said you was with a trainer. Was that like yeah. through your agency or was that just well, like? Yeah. So I was with the PT actually, but it was through Exos, which is like a big facility. They got locations in Pensacola, uh, I think Dallas and Arizona and maybe one in California too. But, um, so yeah, he hooked me up and, you know, I knew I would get good rehab because for me, it was all about getting the rehab coming out of the draft, coming into the draft. Um, you know, for other guys, it's about, okay, getting faster to run the 40, run all these agility drills. Um, for me, it was straight, okay, just get my knee better so I can, by the time camp comes around, I'll be good. So, you know, I went down there. I just did straight rehab. You know, I caught a few balls stationary, but other than that, I was there just recovering. Right. <laughs> so, uh, I seen on one that you done a jersey swap with, uh, was it one of your former teammates or was it just a Virginia Tech alum? Uh... Who did I do jersey swap with? Khalil, Khalil, maybe? Was that who it was with? Khalil, uh, Herbert. Have you done more than one? Or have you? <laughs> I think that was the one I did. Because I was supposed to do more, but they didn't work out. Like, I was supposed to do one with Christian Darisol. But the first game we played him, I didn't play. And the second game we played him, he didn't play. So I think Khalil was the only one I did Okay, so how? Uh, so how's that? I've heard so many different things. Uh so like if you give your jersey away, do you have to pay for that? Yeah, you do. You do? Yeah. Oh god. They're not suck. free, unfortunately. <laughs> that would suck. Well, they, I guess what do they go collect them all? I mean, but they don't every jersey's new each game, ain't it? I mean, you would think. Well, I guess if you don't swap them, then they just wash it like they would in college and high school. I'm assuming. I don't know. You don't know. know. That's yeah. that's, <laughs> that's not your job. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh yeah, man. Uh so any players that you you see like out there that you would want to do a jersey swap with, just off the top of your head? That's hard. I guess it really just depends on like who we play, because uh, you know like some players, like the big time players, they're not gonna jersey swap with you unless you're like like a, a big time quarterback. They would only swap with the quarterback. You know what I'm saying? Or somebody yeah. that they knew. Um, I mean, look at Travis Kelsey, man. I, the, you know, the, yeah, the, we the, do the, play the Chiefs this year, dude. I, you know, <laughs> tied in for tied in. Yeah. He's a uh, you know, and they uh, – do what about season they're having? Uh, mm -hmm. The Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes, uh, he's playing well. Uh, it's crazy to talk about these guys. These are like guys that, you're, you know, that you actually play against. That's cool. Oh, that's uh, wild. The Eagles, I mean, uh, Jalen Hurts, mm -hmm. roll tied. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jalen Hurts. He ended uh, at Oklahoma, by the way. Yeah, but he got a national title now. <laughs> uh, but but he uh, – no, he's playing good too. His mm -hmm. his college career, to see how it played out, is so it's awesome crazy. It, it really is. Uh, I seen a video last night where he was talking after the national championship, and uh, he was talking about how Tua came in after the half, and he was just like, hey, man, he did his thing. We're national champions. I'm not worried about it. You know, mm -hmm. he did exactly what he was supposed to do. 
So to see that and then to see how he's doing as a pro and to see how he's doing as like, you know, uh, in the Super Bowl. I mean, that's, that's, it's really uh, phenomenal. And, you know, like I said the other day, the Lions, man, they're not, they, they are a team to watch for the next couple of years. I mean, for real, y'all are, y'all are young. Y'all are doing good. Uh, of course, you're my favorite player on the team, but my second favorite player is uh, Jamal Adams. Uh, dude, he's a character. You mean Williams? Williams. Oh my God. Yeah. See, I'm not a fan. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm a, I'm a poser. I'm not a fan. <laughs> oh my God. Jamal Adams. He, he's a, who's he play for? He played for Vegas, don't he? Uh, Raiders. Who does he play for now? Raiders. I don't I even know. Oh, he plays for Raiders. The Raiders or Packers. Raiders. He used to play for the Packers, didn't he? I don't even know. Raiders. Anyways, Jamal Williams, <laughs> he's a character. He's my second favorite player. I just like his energy and that he's he's him. Mm-hmm. Is he like that all the time? Like oh, you yeah. see him in the locker room and just, dude, that's, he's hilarious. That's the thing about Jamal because there's guys who are like him, but they're not like him, if that makes sense. Like, they'll be like that some of the time, but when they're having a bad day, like, don't talk to him. Like, there's guys like that. But Jamal Williams, he's like that 24 7. So it's like, I respect it. Like, if you're going to be like that, like, that's cool. Like, you're going to be like that 24 7. That's who you are. And I respect that about him. He never changes. Uh, he's a great leader, a great guy. Um, he's actually one of the guys who encouraged me the most, just, you know, being a rookie. And, you know, he always told me, like, hey, you're going to make a play. You're going to make a play. He actually said that before um, the practice, before um, my first touchdown. He said, you're going to make a play in this game. Sure enough, I made a touchdown. He came up to me and was like, I told you. So I really appreciate him. Um, you know, like I said, he's a good leader, yeah. great guy. He seems like a good guy, man. Uh just watching his like interviews and stuff, and he's so funny all the time. Mm-hmm. And so it's high energy. So uh it's good to know that he does that all the time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you do have players, and that's just not in football, man. That's in life. You got players mm-hmm. who when the cameras are on them and like when they're doing good, they're you know, they're they're high strung but then like you know they're having a bad day or they're you know maybe things ain't going in their way you know they they are super negative uh mm-hmm. so it's good to know like that what you see is what you get uh sure. but just watching him you know he's talking about getting uh traded from the packers and mm-hmm. he was just like you know they didn't love they didn't want me no more i didn't break up with them they oh didn't yeah want me. That interview was uh, funny. i watched that man and i was just like dude you know he uh he's top notch dude and uh i'm glad to know you know because we watch this from the TVs, we right. see it from our phones. Mm-hmm. So it, it is cool to to know somebody that knows them that can confirm that. Uh, For sure, I've met a lot of people through the fight game that they seem cool on the internet, and then you get them in person, they're like, "Man, I'm disappointed." Uh, All right. One person like that was probably uh, Kimbo Sauce let me down. Really? Uh, yeah, he let me down bad. Uh, Act like I knew him, and uh, it was before he died. It was probably back in like 2014. I act like I knew him, and I walk up to him, and I was like, hey, man, what's up, bro? It's been a while. He's like, oh, what's up, dog? You know, dab me up, and I'm thinking, oh, God, he thinks I know him. And <laughs> <laughs> he thinks I know him. So I kept, like, chopping it up with him. Then he finally asked me, he's like, hey, man, like, how oh, I know you, man? You look so familiar. I know I've had to meet you. I was like, dude, I ain't gonna lie. I'm just a fan. Like, I have no, you have no idea who I am. He's like, man, you stupid, boy. You stupid. And then he was like, uh, I asked him for a picture, and, of course, his – uh. His uh, YouTube channel was, I think it was called Money Talks or something like that. And I said, yeah, we posed. I said, Money Talks. And he's like, can we not take the picture? And I was like, yes, we can, Gimbo. Don't, <laughs> don't beat me up. Man. Yeah, no. 19 years old, dude, he was so big. Mm-hmm. He's big. Uh, surprised me, man. You see these people on TV, and then you don't realize how huge they are in person. I, th- I tell everybody that. You know, a lot of people... Uh, of course, I'm sure, uh, you know, uh, a lot of people said whatever they had to say. I'm sure you heard it. It ain't no secret. People were, oh, you know, he'll transition in over to uh, college football, be completely different, and then to see what you did. Dude, that was special. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, of course, I was going to bat the whole time. Like, you know what I was talking about? I'm telling you, you know, people who get paid millions to know football, like, you know, they mm-hmm. know more than we do. So you can't tell me that, you know. Dude, I'm going to go ahead and tell you. If Clemson comes to Coburn, to Virginia, to watch a football game, they <laughs> they know more. The, those those recruiters know more than we do. That's yeah. the thing. They're not just watching everybody. Yeah. If that was the case, dude, and uh, definitely to see you go through everything right was was awesome, man. Because uh, easily, easily, after the injury, after not starting, you know, I'm not going to – 
come out, but there's been a lot of great athletes that I've seen that had potential. People had high expectations for go to college, man. And, you know, maybe they didn't start. Maybe they didn't like the program, you know. And a lot of people don't like the program because they're not the star. They're the star in high school, not the star in yeah. college. But just see how you develop, man. And uh, 100%, got to give a shout out to Jimmy Mitchell, man. Uh, yeah. Him and your mom done a great job raising you. For uh, sure. And just a great family environment, you know. Thank God for your sister, because my brother, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, they've definitely made him a better person. Uh, but no, uh, did everything right, man. So uh, I don't know what else we could talk about. What what more uh, the fans would want to hear? But I always ask this question uh, to people that I have on the show, and I am curious if you had to go back to twelve year old James Mitchell. What advice would you give him being who you are now? Oh, uh, man, that's hard. Everybody because says that. Just, <laughs> just looking where I'm at, like I'm at the pinnacle of my sport. So it's like, it's hard. Um, what advice would I give? Honestly, like to be completely transparent with you, there isn't a lot that I would change about my journey. Um, if I had to give advice, I would just, you know, just pretty much say what I was told by my support system. Uh, you know, keep your head down, keep working. You got potential. Like there's going to be people, there's going to be people that try to drag you down along the way. And as long as you should keep your head down, stay focused, do the right thing, surround yourself with the right crowd. You know, you can do everything you want to do. And, you know, fortunately I was able to do that. And another thing I want to say is, um, like you mentioned earlier, there are going to be those people that, you know, say you're not going to make it or say you're not going to do this, but, Having those people are important, but not just having the mental capacity to overcome that yourself, but surrounding yourself with the right support system is huge beyond what words can really say. Um, Because like when I went through the injury, you know, if I didn't have that support system, I can't tell you how much harder it would have been if I didn't have my mom, my dad, my sisters, Jordan, Marcus, the church, you know, good friends from back home. And then even with my transition, uh, to Detroit, the same thing, you know, I struggled starting out there, just being alone, being in a hotel by myself, like just surround yourself with the right people is huge. And, you know, I would give that advice to anybody, no matter what you do. Um, just uh, surround yourself with people who are like-minded and, uh, you know, want to see you do well. Absolutely, man. Well, thank you. I appreciate you for coming out. Uh, I don't know when the next time I'm going to see you is, but I'll see you around, man. And nothing but love and uh, I expect good things, dude. Yes, I expect good things for you. I Thank appreciate you. Ah, oh, man. That's when I remember who I am. Yo, I'm King Tate. Cold, but I'm still dropping bombs like I'm Green Bay. Hell, Mary, throw it in the air for the last play. This was a boulevard of broken dreams like it's Green Day. Watch me like a screenplay. Put my life on replay. Sweat has been a long time coming. Focus on the art. Spend a long time on it. I can't miss a mark like I'm Hawkeye. Running with my eyes on the target. Best believe I want it. Yeah, I want my crown and want to wear it, too.